Okay, Yes, Priyanka. sir. So, first of all, just tell me, what do you understand by the degree of freedom? Sir, degree of freedom, it is the minimum number of independent variables required to pick the state of a system or to completely define the motion of a system. Okay. And what is the element principle? Sir, the Lambert principle, sir, the summation of all the forces, including with inertia forces, then the system comes to rest. Okay, and what is the inertia force? Inertia forces, sir, are the forces which comes because of the acceleration. Okay, okay that is okay. Okay, uh, just explain the crank and slot lever mechanism. How does it operate? Or how does it operates? How does it works? Crank and slot lever mechanism. Sir, so by diagram or by verbally? Just verbally, just explain me. Sir, one pitch link is there that is connecting rod, and there is a driving, there is a crank which is in the slotted bar. And the slotted bar is connected with the tool or ram. So the crank is rotating in the link which is having slotted bar, and that link is having omega. So the rotation of crank gives the reciprocation motion to the tool. Okay, okay, that is okay. And what is quick return ratio? So the quick return ratio is defined as the ratio of Time of cutting is stroke to the time of return is stroke, and it is always greater than one. Okay. And what is hypoid gear? So the, it is a part of so when the shafts are non-parallel and non-intersecting, mm -hmm. then we get the pure rolling motion. When the pure rolling is not possible in non-intersecting shaft, rolling motion is possible with some sliding, and uh, we get the that motion on the two hyperbolide surfaces in contact. And the part of that hyperbolide is called as hyperd gear. When a small portion is taken from that hyperbolide. Okay, that is okay. Okay, just tell me one thing. Uh, in the gears, what kind of gears do you normally use in the differential of an automobile? Sir, in differential gears, we use bevel gears. What kind of bevel gears? Uh, I'm not sure, but a helical bevel gear. Helical bevel gear. Okay. Okay. Provide me some uh, some advantages of the helical bevel gear over the straight bevel gear. Sir, uh, gradual engagement and disengagement. And uh, in straight bevel gear, there is sudden engagement and disengagement. Impact stresses is minimum. In helical bevel gear. Okay. Any other difference? Sir, uh, teeth are parallel to the line, X, line of axis of rotation in a straight bevel gear, and in helical bevel gear, there is some inclination of the teeth with orientation of axis of rotation of the gear. Okay. Okay, that is okay. Okay, uh, what is the impact of pressure angle in gear? So the power component we get, it is Ft upon cos phi. So that phi is called pressure angle. The, when the two gears are meeting, the power F, cos phi is having the important role in power transmission. Okay. Okay, that is okay. Let us suppose if the pressure angle is too high. Then uh, how does it affect the interference problem? So by increasing the pressure angle, interference is reduced. Okay, let us suppose if the pinion and the gear are both are, are of different uh, size. Okay, in that case, uh, what what will you do? In with uh, which component will you say first, the pinion or the gear? 
and y different size yes so if both are of different size then we have to individually calculate the minimum number of wheels on both the gears and uh, satisfying the gear ratio and that is okay but it is not possible to save the entire assembly by using by the by just saving the one component itself sir uh, this is only possible when both are having same addendum or same size okay so okay, what are the required condition for the interchangeable gears inter interchangeable gears sir uh, pressure angle should be same of both the gears module should be same and circular pin should be same Okay. Anything else, sir? So actually, I am not getting what is interchangeable means here. Interchangeable means anybody can be driver or something no, else. No, no. Interchangeable gear means this can be easily replaced by another another component. Let us suppose if you have a gear pin. Okay, if the gear gets fail, in that case, you have to replace the gear with new one. Okay, okay. that is interchangeable gear. Sir, so then press then pitch circle diameter is also same. Okay, okay, that is okay. Okay, just only one thing. What is the uh, difference between the gunner and a fly flywheel? Sir, the flywheel controls the fluctuation of speed. Mm -hmm. When there is change in torque during the cycle, and governor controls the speed due to fluctuation of speed by controlling the fuel supply. Whether which which one is the essential component for the engine? Essential component. Sir, governor is an essential component, and flywheel is optional. Okay, the governor is essential component. Okay, which type of governor is used in the four wheelers? Four wheelers. Hmm. Not necessary. Okay, what is hunting? Sir, hunting is two and very fast to and fro motion of the sleeve in the upper stopper and lower stopper, and this happens when the sensitivity of the governor is very high. Okay, okay, that is okay. And how do you balance the uh, radial engines? So radial engines, the primary force, primary torque. Secondary force and secondary torques are for all four are balanced. Let us suppose if you have a V engine which is having a angle of ninety degree in between them. Okay, they are two uh, V engine in between angle is ninety degree. In that case, what will be the magnitude of the primary forces or primary uh, secondary forces here? Sir, So the primary force is M R omega square cos theta minus sin theta, and the secondary force is. How you are saying that M R omega square cos theta minus sin of theta? On what basis? So the primary force is M R omega square into cos theta. Mm. The angle between them, sin mm. of the stroke and current position. Mm. सर अगर सर एक इंजन के लाइन ऑफ स्ट्रोक को अगर हम रेफरेंस मान लें तो शायद एम आर ओमेगा स्क्वायर ही आएगी जस्ट अली वन थिंग व्हाट इज रेडियल इंजन व्हाट इज रेडियल इंजन रेडियल इंजन सर व्हेन द सिलेंडर्स आर अरेंज्ड इन अ सर्कल And the line of stroke of all the engines are in the radial direction. In the radial direction, okay. And how many cranks are there to operate all of these cylinders? Sir, there is only one main main crank is only one which is connected to all the. So do we require to balance the moment here? Okay. 
I'm not sure, but I think it's not required. Not required. Okay, that is okay. Okay, what is firing order? Sir, when there are multiple cylinders in an engine, mm -hmm. then we want to fire all the cylinders in such a manner that we get uniform torque from uniform torque from the engine. So different number of cylinders has having different firing order. Okay, and what do you understand by the critical damp system, over damp system, and the under damp system? Sir, uh, critical damp system are that one in which damping ratio is one, and its response is much faster as compared to over damp system. Over damp system is also similar to critical damp system, but its its response is little late as compared to critical damp system, and both corresponding to no vibration condition. Whereas under damping system corresponds to vibration, and its okay. damping ratio is less than one. Let us suppose if there is a system which is acted upon by some external force, okay? okay, and the external force is acting with some frequency. In that case, just tell me one thing: with which frequency the system will vibrate? Yes, sir, uh, please repeat the question. Let us say if you have a system which is having some natural frequency, and if you are acting a if you are applying the external force with some frequency let us say omega okay in that case the final in the entire system okay with which frequency it is going to vibrate sir if damping is there then it will vibrate with damp natural frequency omega d ओके देखो आप आंसर प्रोवाइड कर रहे हो ठीक है कोई इशू नहीं है थोड़ा सा गियर को स्टडी करो एक बार अच्छे से ठीक है ना उसमें आपके पास यहाँ पे प्रेशर एंगल को देखना बैलेंसिंग वाले केस में जो मैंने पूछा था कि उसमें बीस सेंटर की रेडियो बैलेंसिंग कैसे करोगे वहाँ पे आपको मोमेंट की रिक्वायरमेंट नहीं पड़ती आपको सिर्फ वहाँ पे बैलेंस करना है फोर्सेस को ठीक है ना और वहाँ पे आप डायरेक्ट रिवर्स क्रैंक करते यूज करते हो तो जो आप एक्सप्लेन कर रहे थे थोड़ा सा ज्यादा एक्सप्लेन करते उसको जरूर एक बार अच्छे से देखना ठीक है लास्ट क्वेश्चन में जब मैंने आपसे पूछा कि आपका किस फ्रीक्वेंसी से वो वाइब्रेट करेगा तो ध्यान रखना है जब भी आप एक्सटर्नल फोर्स अप्लाई होती है बॉडी के ऊपर तो कभी वो डैम वाइब्रेशन से डैम फ्रीक्वेंसी से वाइब्रेट नहीं करता उस टाइम पे फोर्स की जो एक एक्साइटेशन फ्रीक्वेंसी होगी उसी से वो आपको वाइब्रेट वहाँ पे करेगा ठीक है ना अगर सिस्टम फ्री डैम वाइब्रेशन का केस है तो वो डैम फ्रीक्वेंसी से आपका वाइब्रेट करेगा अदरवाइज नहीं ओके इसका बहुत होगा ध्यान रखना और आपके पास बाकी जो मैंने क्वेश्चन पूछे थे बाकी ओवरऑल आपने जो टेरियो फीडम के बारे में बताया वो सही बताया था बाकी उसमें कोई इशू नहीं और कुछ आपको पूछना हो अभी सर एक क्वेश्चन था जैसे सर जो हम एच जी एल और टी एल लाइन बनाते हैं अगर सर पाइप हमारा वर्टिकल हो तो उस केस में कैसे बनाएंगे क्योंकि वर्टिकल का केस कभी देखा आपको सोचो आपको सोचो कैसे बनेगा आपका सर कोई भी एक रेफरेंस ले लो ना आपके पास कोई भी एक रेफरेंस ले लो ना बस डिफरेंस कुछ नहीं है आप, आपके पास जिस तरह से आप होरिजोंटल के केस में बनाते हो ना सेम केस में जो आप जो रिप्रेजेंट करोगे वो एक पर्टिकुलर स्केल लेके आप यहां पे करोगे तो आप स्केल ले लो होरिजोंटल स्केल में ऐसे बना देंगे हां बस बस इतना ध्यान रखना हॉरिजॉन्टल डॉक्टर से रेफरेंस है वहां पे एक कोई एनर्जी की मार्किंग करो फिर आप शो करो कि एनर्जी पॉइंट पे क्या थी फिर आपको तो ऊपर जाता था एनर्जी कैसे वेरी करना बस वो शो करना कुछ बाकी सिंपल सा केस है मुश्किल नहीं है वापस ओके यस सर ओके ओके नाउ यू कैन लिव द मीटिंग